faster than a speeding bullet. More powerful than a locomotive. Able to leap tall buildings at a single bound. Look, up in the sky, it's a bird. It's a plane. It's Defining 22 seconds on the clock. Tolo to win the match for the Vixens, maybe. She has. There is time. There is time. Irene Van Dyke needs to hold strong. They've got to find her. Casey wins. It's up to you. Put it to her. Put it to her. Oh, tip trick here. Eight seconds. Give it to Van Dyke. Oh, she's hit the net. She's blown it. And welcome to Super Women Live, the official show of the Melbourne Vixens and at Netball Victoria. And this week's edition proudly presented by the Melbourne Vixens premier partner, Jason Betting, helping the Melbourne Vixens rest and recover. A thrilling result, uh, according to the bookies. They were a very, very short price favourites, the Melbourne Vixens, but the Waikato Bay are plenty magic. One of the more consistent sides in the competition over the years. The only side to play in the finals in every season of the ANZ Championship. And they took it right up to the Vixens. Led the game for all but 50 seconds. The Vixens got the job done in the closing stages. Joining us, the girl who shot those last two goals. One to level the scores. One to win the match, uh, Tegan Caldwell. Tegan, thank you very much for joining us. No worries. Thanks for having me. Congratulations on the clutch shots. Uh, listening back to that now, is can you... Was there any different thought processes going through the head when you're uh, particularly the one to, to win the game? Yeah, no, it was pretty much I uh, got the ball and turn and just get the shot in, really. And it was It's all a bit of a blur, but um, I was lucky enough to put it up and get it in. So. From that point on, there was 18 seconds left or, or thereabouts, and, and obviously the Magic had to do everything right if they were to score. They had to hit their passes. Is it a case of just sitting back helplessly knowing that you, you're going to extra time if they do that? and. Did you see the way it unfolded sort of straight away that the, the pass had sort of been knocked up and that the it was a turnover and that that was the end of the game? Or Yeah, well, um, straight along their centre pass uh, ran straight down to just talk it up, put the pressure <laughs> on, try and hold it up and, you know, having our two defenders in front in the circle... Um, just put the doubt in their mind to put it in and uh, they didn't pass it and we were able to get that whole ball, so it was really good. Have you uh, have you played an extra time match? Because obviously that's where we were headed, had yeah. they been able to convert that. Not at that level, so I'll, I'll think I'll hold off that until it has to come. So. Uh, it must be an enormous reinforcement of, of self-belief because at the game it just looked like one of those days where it was going to be a frustrating afternoon where every time the Vixens got close there'd be a, a turnover or, or the Magic could produce something to, to drag the game back out again and when it got out to five goals, which is the biggest lead probably of the match, and there was only four minutes to go, I'm, I'm sure a lot of the fans around the ground were thinking that they just were going to run out of time. Uh, in terms of the, the way you were being, I guess, spoken to or speaking to each other at the breaks and, and these sorts of things, was there ever a moment where you were sort of sitting there and thinking, gee, there are, they just keep answering everything we throw at them? Yeah, at the breaks we always um, had lots of encouragement and never doubted ourselves and um, knew that we had to pick up our game and put everything out there and um, that's what we did in the end. So never crossed our mind that we couldn't get there and we were lucky enough to. <laughs> From your own point of view, obviously getting some games last year with Pharrell McMahon's injury, um, obviously then getting the, the confirmation very late before the season that you were going to be a part of a regular. Looking back, how much do you... Uh, how much do you think those games that you got last year have, have sort of influenced the way you've started the season? Yeah, definitely. The more experience you get, um, obviously, the better you can perform out there. And having those uh, couple of games towards the end of the year or majority of the season last year uh, when Sherelle was injured, 
to get out there and have that time on the court definitely set me up and having a really long and strong pre-season this year I was lucky enough to not really have any injuries to get um, so I could get through uh, definitely set me up for the season this year um, an interesting game personally as well obviously started off uh, on the court with with Kate Beveridge and it was a tight first quarter and then uh, Karen Howarth came on in the early part of the second quarter and then you were watching on and then you came back on again in the last quarter it's uh you're probably sort of riding the, the ups and downs where you're like, well, I've had a crack, now I'm off, and then you get your other opportunities. So it's, it's, I guess it, it reinforces the, the need for all players in these situations to just stay on their toes because you're going to get a call up again pretty soon. Yeah, I was, um, obviously did come off and um, Karen's always been on, able to go on and perform the last couple of rounds. And, you know, you never want to get taken off, but you wish the best for the girls that do go on. And um, obviously the aim is to get the team to win. And I was lucky enough to get the opportunity to come back on at three-quarter time. And um, I wanted to take that and get out there and um, work really hard to help us over the line. Do you think there was an element of fatigue? I know, I know players and teams don't like putting up sort of excuses as to, to why perhaps they might have been down in, in patches of games, but having played interstate three times in a row and then coming back again, first home game, was there any level of fatigue, do you think, amongst players, given they've gone Brisbane, Adelaide, or Brisbane, Perth, Adelaide in consecutive weeks? Oh, look... People can say that. Um, you know, it might be a factor, it might not be a factor. Everyone uh, is different to each other. And, you know, obviously our, our routine this weekend was different where we were all off by ourselves, you know, Saturday when we're usually together as a group and um, doing our own thing So and only meeting Sunday morning. So it was definitely a different routine to our last three weeks. Um, but obviously it's one that we're going to have to get into and um, hopefully we'll have, have a better start next time. Now, they... We tend to talk about the defence every week on this program, given how strong they've been. And did read a lot of netball experts say that if you hold the opposition to 40, then that's considered an outstanding defensive effort in the ANZ Championship. And so far this season, Queensland scored 42, the Fever 41, Adelaide 34, and now the Magic 39. And just that combination has been outstanding. And, and Jeeva Mentor, just to, to add another name to the belt in the first three weeks, beating Romelda Aiken, Borrego and Bassett, and now beating Irene Van Dyke, who's regarded by some as one of the greatest shooters of all time, just keeps uh, knocking them over. If you're looking at Player of the Year honours, she'd, uh, she'd be right amongst them at the moment. Yeah, Jeeva's definitely had a great start to the season and the way she can get out there and play against such great goal shooters and perform the way she is, and she's been training so hard to be able to do that. Um, it's really great to see and encouraging for the rest of the team. Now, we've got five double passes to give away for the Vixen's second home game. We gave a lot of those away for, for last week's or for this week's match, which was obviously outstanding and did get a lot of SMSs coming through in our system from, from fans that said it was the first time they ever went to the netball and they were so impressed by it that they have actually signed up as Vixen's members on the back of that game. The atmosphere, obviously 4,740 people there, which is a, a record crowd for the opening home game of the season. The atmosphere, I know a lot of players credited uh, the, the crowd for, for assisting them in the close finish and, and perhaps uh, making the magic a little jittery with some of the, the way they're moving the ball in the latter stages of the game. But five double passes for the Vixen's second home game against the Queensland Firebirds who are the reigning premiers. They're battling a little bit for form but still got plenty of good players in their side. Uh, this Sunday, the 29th of April at High Sense Arena, they'll be giving away on the program just as they were last week uh, for the best SMS questions through for Teague and Corbell. We'll get to those uh, after our next break as well. So uh, 0433981116 for the best uh, five questions that come through. You can win yourself a double pass for the Vixen's second home game of the season against the Queensland Firebirds. And uh, also to see the superwomen uh, of netball, the Melbourne Vixens uh, take on the reigning champions, the Queensland Firebirds, next Sunday. It's a 2.20 start. If you are uh, perhaps unable to snare one of these double passes, uh, then you can uh, get the chance. Don't miss out on the spectacular match. Purchase your tickets through Ticketek now. After defeating the Firebirds in the first round, the Superwomen will be out to do it again. Uh, we will uh, change tack just for the moment. So Cassandra Hudson joins us, uh, Netball Victoria's Community Engagement Officer. Uh, thank you for joining us, uh, Cassandra. Thank you. Now, uh, there's a little bit of a, a program that we'd like to uh, get some more information on. The Vixens will be involved in a new initiative, the Melbourne Vixens Friendly School Program, which will kick off in the Dandenong area at the end of April. Uh, the program aims to increase netball participation, awareness and opportunities for new arrival migrant communities and families. To tell us all about it, uh, we've got you uh, on the program. Can you, I guess, uh, take us through the, the ins and outs of that program? Yeah, definitely. Um, the Melbourne Vixens Friendly School Program is aimed at kids um, in areas that have a high multicultural population and it's basically a combination of physical netball clinics, educational resources and also gives them a chance to, to visit a, um, a Melbourne Vixens match 
And I guess for us, the the main aim of the program is to um, really support that grassroots netball in that region. What have you found to have been, I guess, some of the, the major hurdles faced by girls when participating and I guess ultimately, by extension, the benefits that they get out of, uh, out of playing sport at that level? Definitely. Um, well, I guess with netball, because it is a, a Commonwealth sport, mm-hmm. um, there isn't a great deal of awareness in those multicultural populations. So for us, one of the, um, the big barriers that we have is just increasing the awareness and um, the understanding of the game. But netball is a fantastic game for, for women to play and girls to play. Um, you know, it builds teamwork and exercise and all these great things that come along with it. So uh, a whole range of benefits for that. Got a, a launch on Tuesday, as I understand it? Yes, definitely. So I've got a launch in the Dandenong area on Tuesday. Um, so our program will actually be rolled across schools in the Dandenong region um, for Term 2. So we're really excited about that. We've got Jeeva Mentor um, and Kate Beveridge coming along. And the main aim of that launch, again, is just to create those networks mm-hmm. in the community. So we've got schools participating and um, and the mayor coming along as well. So that should be great. I know when I grew up in, in country Victoria that when I was playing junior footy, it was always linked with a netball club. So there's a chance for that, that sort of family environment as well. You might have your dad might have played football and your brother plays as well. And then you can get involved in the club and, and through obviously friends from school and these sorts of things as well. And as I understand it, it would be up in the top two, uh, if I'm selling it short I apologise for the level of participation around Australia for, for netball at, at local level and, and it does I guess promote that family feel with, with often that connection with other sporting clubs as well Definitely and I think that's the great strength of netball, the fact that there is such a, a great support out there at grassroots level um, and people are just willing to give it a go and, and support it where it needs the support so we're very lucky in that respect. And obviously the the level of interest in it is is sort of swelling all around Australia. We see with the, the TV exposure now on free to air TV, with a couple of games back to back on Channel Ten on the weekends. That obviously you are getting that interest. That the crowd, as we saw today, was was huge, a, a record crowd for for home games. And if you look at that around the traps, I guess it, it just goes to show the the level of growth in the sport and and how if you can continue to bring people through at the bottom level and. We can continue to produce, uh, I guess, talented players, Tegan Caldwell's country Victorian as well, just keep them coming through. Yeah, definitely. Um, and exactly, um, we've got a great amount of su- support out there and um, if we can get another great player through this program, mm-hmm. we'll be it. That'd be fantastic. Any partners, I guess, supporting the program with you guys? Uh, definitely. So Vic Health is our main sponsor for the program. Mm-hmm. They run a state sporting association program. We're very, very lucky to have them on board. On top of that, just quickly, um, City of Greater Dandenong, Dandenong and District Netball Association and the Migrant Resource Centre out there all supporting us fantastically. And how can listeners get involved if they'd like to find out more or help out in some way? Just jump onto the website, yep. netball vic.com.au. There'll be a section on the website which is Netball for All. You'll be able to see um, great stories and case studies and of course contact details and get in touch please. Cassandra, thank you very much for the information. Thank you. And uh, just as we go to the break as well, are you a super fan? More than 2,100 super fans have pledged their support for the Melbourne Vixens more than ever before. Join in on the fun, get your season 2012 Vixens membership and show your support as the super women of netball take to the court. Three game packages available at melbournevixens.com. Dot AU. We're going to take a break. Plenty of SMS's questions coming through. If you'd uh, like to be in the chance to be amongst the best five from those, I'm going to double pass to the Vixens' second home game against the Queensland Firebirds uh, next Sunday, the 29th of April. SMS your questions through for Tegan Corbell, 0433 98 11 16. We'll be back with more. Welcome back at 10 minutes to 11. We can tell you that Manchester United have scored twice already in the first 15 minutes of the second half to Welbeck and Nani. They lead Everton 3 1 now after 62 minutes. And Looking like winners there. That'll annoy Adam Zawicki from Bay City Holden, who we'll hear from a little bit later on in the program. But this is Super Women Live, the official show of the Melbourne Vixens and Netball Victoria. And this week's edition is proudly presented by the Melbourne Vixens' premier partner, Jason Betting, helping the Melbourne Vixens rest and recover. We've got Tegan Corbell in the studio, who was the, the hero, shooting the last two goals of the Melbourne Vixens' uh, win over Waikato. One to level the scores and one to put them in front inside the last 20 seconds of the match. We are giving away five double passes to the next Sunday's clash against the reigning premiers, the Queensland Firebirds who are uh, in a little bit of strife that will uh, be coming out desperate, so I promise this to be another good game. Uh, the best five SMSs will win those. Uh, Dean and Berwick says, Tegan, uh, which players did you most model your game around as an up-and-coming netballer? 
Well, that's a good question. I obviously have a similar game to Shirelle. Um, I have to admit, I didn't follow a lot of netball when I was younger. I was just out there playing it because I enjoyed it. But um, obviously, playing similar to Shirelle, um, just with my agility and my speed, um, I can learn a lot from her at training. So she'd probably be one of the ones now who I try and take as many opportunities from to get feedback. So Dean and Berwick, uh, endorsement for that question. Uh, you can give us a call. You've uh, won the double pass, uh, 256, number ending in 256. Uh, one here from, where are we? Uh, Jackie N says, uh, Tegan, how do you stay calm under such pressure? Obviously the, uh, the clutch shot at the end of the game. Yeah, um, I don't really have an answer to that. I just remember getting the ball, turning and putting it up, obviously taking my time. Um, it's very hard to um, relay that, that feelings and that pressure at a training session, um, but obviously we try to do it. So, you know, getting the ball, taking your time, putting it up there and uh, hoping it goes in. What are some of the ways you might try to replicate that situation in, in a training sense? Obviously, you you, you do a little bit of match simulation and that sort of thing. But is there any way that you, you can sort of simulate a pressure cooker environment like that? Um, it can be difficult. We try and do um, some activities where the goal is a shooting and then if you miss everyone but you have has to sprint. So mm-hmm. obviously <laughs> you don't want to make the girls in your team sprint. So there's little things like that that's probably um, the best way to put yourself under the pump that's similar. But, um, yeah, it can be pretty difficult. Uh, Jackie, give us a call. Uh, you can pick up a, a double pass as well. Just on the, you mentioned sort of not necessarily watching a lot of the netball. We often hear from AFL footballers who, who play and they say they don't watch any other football over the course of the weekend. Are there players across the team that will religiously watch every game and sort of study how the opposition's performing and that sort of thing? Is it a bit of a mixed bag? Are you someone who will watch the other games on the weekend or just basically prepare for, for the Vixens and then that's it? Or? I think everyone's happy to flick it on and um, see who's playing and obviously see who wins. Uh, a lot of the girls are close to um, people or players in the other team so you know you want to see how they're going um, but I wouldn't say anyone's religiously studies um, the oppositions, but you know you obviously want to keep in contact with what the other girls are doing and how they're playing, but concentrating on the team we're coming up against that week. Uh, Jeff in Baronia says, My daughter is 10, and in her first season of netball, she's having trouble with stepping. Do you have any tips to help her remember not to step? I guess that probably comes down to remembering which one's the grounded foot and that sort of thing. Yeah, practice really. Um, one tip is you can always uh, put a hoop on the ground or have a circle or something and they run into the circle, land and someone throws them the ball. Um, that's a pretty basic one that we've done with a lot of netter kids. So, But um, keep encouraging, keep practising, keep reminding. Uh, Jeff in Barone, you can uh, take her along on Sunday and she can watch how the pros do it. Uh, give us a call, 94291116. Ali from Monterno South says, what was your pathway through to the Vixens? What age did you start playing at a, at a high level? Um, I started in Anglesey, so playing down there. A lot of the girls uh, who I play with now in the Vixens came up and played a lot in the, a lot of the Victorian state teams, under 17s, under 19s. I didn't make my first state team until I was uh, 20, so I played in the Victorian under 21s team. So I'm kind of what they call a late bloomer. Um, didn't didn't have the same pathway that Netball Victoria puts in place for a lot of the other girls. So came in late, enjoyed my netball um, just growing up and then I eventually got the opportunity to play in the state team, um, represented Australia at the World Championships, World Youth Championships and then um, got in contact or Julie got in contact with me once I returned to offer a spot at the Vixens. Uh, some interesting SMSs coming through. When I hear Tegan is a musical genius, can she sing, <laughs> sing it too? Uh, please sing us your favourite song off the uh, SMS. I'm probably going to have to give that one a pass. Sorry, guys. <laughs> That's all right. Uh, good of them to try, though. Um, representing Australia in Fastnet, uh, I guess your, your thoughts on, on that concept and, and that experience. It's been described as 2020 netball, I guess, in, in the sense that you can have your, your super scoring periods and, and that sort of stuff. Does it take much adjustment to, to that level? I, I'd imagine it'd be harder for defenders to adjust, I would think, in, in that level of the game. Yeah, um, it was a great experience to get over there and do that. And obviously um, having the different different kind of rules in the game changes that up a little. The defenders think there's not a lot of change for them. Um, but obviously goalers can shoot outside and you can make substitutes. So there's lo- lots of different little activities. And, um, yeah, I just thoroughly enjoy getting over there and experience something different like that. Uh, Tony's given us a call from Craigie Byrne. Good evening, Tony. Yeah, good day, guys. How are you going? Not too bad. Hi, Tony. How are you? Good. How are you, Tegan? Good, thank you. 
Look, um, my daughter's a nine-year-old netball. She's just sort of been playing for about 12 months now. and I've never actually taken her to a big thing game before, so that's something I'm probably intending to do. Yeah. Uh, um, she's a goal to so mm-hmm. she gets frustrated with... Um, look at her, a bit of contentious umpiring <laughs> in the league that they're playing in, but uh, I'm, I'm actually the coach of the, the side as well, and I'm just wondering if there's any pointers we can give her at, at her age. Yeah. For, Number one thing is always encouragement. Um, just try and keep her on her toes, moving around um, the goalers and, uh, yeah, see, see how she goes with that and um, try and relay anything you can in a game into a practice um, session for her. And, Tony, uh, hold the line. You can take her along uh, this Sunday as well uh, when they take on the Queensland Firebirds. Uh, I've asked this question to Kate Beveridge when she was in as well. Is there any type of defender or a particular defender that you find uh, most difficult in regards to style? Uh, observing today, the Magic appeared to defend space extremely well. I guess that's the difference with the zoning and the man-on-man type thing. But is there any particular uh, defender that you've had most trouble with, do you think? Oh, the defence is getting tougher and tougher each year, but I would probably say Monia Gerard's probably one of the toughest players who I have to play against. Um, she can definitely keep up with me and, um, once again, physical like a lot of the other girls. So uh, that's always a good um, uh, time on the court with her. Um, looking at, I guess, the, the way the Magic played with that sort of zone style, did, was there an adjustment period that needed to be made for that? Obviously, it, it seemed for those who went to the netball, that's a, a huge example of how different... New Zealand is to say Australia in the way that they actually defend and there was a lot of times where the Vixens were moving the ball down the court and, and there seemed to be almost no options just due to the way that they were able to crowd the space do you think playing three Australian sides and then playing a New Zealand style of defence also poses those difficulties as well? Yeah definitely and it's one thing that we focus on in training this week is their style of defence and how we were going to break it and what we were going to do so um, hopefully the more times we play the New Zealand teams we'll get better at uh, working through that defence pressure that they put on. And and uh, Benny Carbonaro, I'm sure most of you are uh, all familiar with, says uh, Karen Howarth has fitted in well, has proven that uh, solid A&L form can get you a contract, uh, a lot like you, Tegan, he says. Yeah, Karen um, has done a great job so far and she works so hard in the pre-season to get to where she is now and just to be able to throw her out on the court when we need to and her to stand up the way um, that she does is really encouraging and, um, yeah, you know, should be inspiring for a lot of other girls. For those who'd like to see a lot of the Vixens this year, uh, you can uh, sign up as a member at melbournevixens.com.au. More than 2,100 super fans have pledged their support for the Melbourne Vixens and that's more than ever before. So join in on the fun, get your season 2012 Vixens membership and show your support as the Super Women of Netball take to the court. Three game packages are available. Uh, just a few more before we let you go. The, Cheryl McMahon, what's her, I guess, her role around the uh, the team at the moment? Or observing her on the bench, taking notes and these sorts of things. Is she just there as someone who can assist at training and provide that encouragement? Is she playing some sort of an assistant coaching role? Or? Yeah, definitely um, another voice, another set of eyes and someone else that can give feedback. So she's coming into trainings, uh, helping us out with who we're coming up against uh, in the week and then and, um, giving us lots of feedback and tips during our training session as well. So we're very grateful that she's still around with us. And our fifth uh, double pass winner is Adam from Sunshine, who says, do you still get nervous before games or during games? And if so, how do you actually block that out? Is there a, a set, mo- is there a way you, you, I guess, relax your mindset before a game? Are you someone who's generally nervous pre-match? Or? I like to think that I don't get <laughs> nervous, but I think that um, isn't the case anymore. I think just hanging out with the girls, having a bit of a laugh, a bit of fun, um, not being too serious before our match is one of the best ways for me um, to cope with that. But, you know... Any, any tips and any way to get through, that's always great. So, Adam, uh, give us a call. You can pick up the fifth of those double passes as well. Uh, just a, a couple that we like to, to throw in, but before we let you go as well, uh, AFL team supported? You got a favourite AFL uh, Yes, star? that would be the Carlton footy club. It seems that half, at least half <laughs> the Vixens barrack for the Blues. Uh, I know Coletto's a Blue and a few others. I think Sherelle McMahon's a Blue as well. Yeah, so. yeah. We're going well. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, Obviously, on the back of disappointment on Saturday, I think you're playing Freo next, so... uh must have been good to, to get straight out there and win again after the disappointment of watching them on Saturday. Yeah, definitely. I was um, hoping that we weren't going to have uh, the same outcome as them, um, unlike the week before where we both had a win. So looking forward to next week and see how we perform against uh, Freo. And uh, another one, we've asked this question of everyone as well, and, and we get a fairly solid sort of a, a consistent answer, but if you could trade a career in netball, if there was another sport that you could play at the highest level, if you had to choose one, I'd like to be one of the best in the world at this. What is it? 
that's a good question. I would say maybe tennis. Tennis? Yeah. That's the one of, that wins was it? most yeah, of the time. I, <laughs> I was a bit of a fan of tennis. I played that in the summer when I was growing up, so that would be mine. And uh, just a, a couple more as well. Uh, Funniest teammate, when I've thrown this out, you've actually been nominated by everyone. <laughs> so it'll be interesting to see what your thoughts are on this one. Well, that's a good one. <laughs> oh, um, funniest teammate. Let's go. You know what? Michaela Wilson. Okay. Yeah, <laughs> surprise little packet she is, but um, always a really good laugh. She got a, uh, a nomination, I think, from Cheryl McMahon yeah, as well. Good. So uh, she was in there. And someone you'd, you'd least like to be roomed with if you had to play in the state because they would annoy you. <laughs> Oh, no, I get along well with all the girls, and that's always going to be the answer. Some keep you awake or be chatty or something. Um, apparently, there's some sleep talkers, so I might give them a miss in my team. Uh, do you have any pre-match superstitions or anything that you have to do before a game? Any music you listen to before a match in particular? Or? No, not really. I just like to get there early. Okay. <laughs> that's mine. That's all right. Uh, Favourite movie? Um, I like lots of different movies, but Finding the Everland's a pretty good one for me. And uh, one serious one, uh, best team you've played out of the four, do you think, so far? The uh, stiffest opposition. Obviously, Magic got the closest, but who's Magic the best team? Magic did, with their versatility mm-hmm. in defence, I reckon. Um, obviously, our performance wasn't that great, but uh, probably even the Thunderbirds last week put up a great fight. And I will throw another one in there. Thoughts on Queensland? You've played them once before. Uh, anything you've, you've learnt from, from that match? Obviously you were successful in that game. Now you're playing them at home and uh, they might have lost Chelsea Pittman. She got injured today, so we'll, uh, I suspect she's going to miss that game and, and possibly some more. And Obviously, they lost McMenamin, but at the same time, they've got a lot of international players in their side. Uh, your thoughts on the second matchup with them? Yeah, they're still a very strong team, and um, obviously their season's um, becoming on the line now. The rounds are getting closer, so it'll definitely be a tough match and uh, not, not at all easy for us. Obviously, playing at home um, will be exciting again, but... You know, we've still got to go out there and perform to our best to be able to get over the line at the end. Tegan, thank you very much for your time. Congratulations.